Hello, welcome to lesson two. We are moving on into the book of Proverbs, lesson two. Uh, we're in Proverbs 2, 1 through 15. Uh, if you're studying this with me and you would like to have a book, come by the church office. We'd be happy to give you a book. I'm going by uh, the BGCT Study Guide Connect 360. Uh, comes quarterly, usually about 13 lessons in it. And um be happy to give you a copy of that. Let's see if I can get my picture all adjusted this morning. So the main idea, if we live according to the wisdom God gives, he will protect us and direct us. Um, absolutely. Uh, I don't think that means that everything in your life is always going to be great. Uh, we have our days, don't we? But generally speaking, he will protect us and direct us. That's been my experience. I've had some bumps, had some problems here and there. But generally speaking, that's what he does. Uh, the question to explore, can all things work together for my good? I think that's true. I don't think uh, just because you possess wisdom means that everything always goes great with you or you always make wise decisions. Uh, Solomon obviously didn't, especially towards the end of his life. My goodness, uh, how desperately we should want to end well. Um, start well, you know, function well, end well. Um, this is an, another one of those lessons. Uh, I went ahead and read forward in Proverbs quite a bit. And um, uh, this, this was one of the first of many, many, many Proverbs where it begins, My Son. I saw a few that said, My Sons. I thought that was interesting. I never noticed that before. Um, you know, the curriculum writers seem to think that there are times where this is God the Father speaking to his children. I think maybe, but I didn't, I don't get that. I see, um, a father speaking to his son or sons. Uh, seems like it's Solomon sometimes speaking to his children. Sometimes uh, it's the wisdom is personified in the Proverbs, like wisdom is a person speaking. Maybe I'll get to a place where there's some passages where it's pretty obvious that God is speaking. Just hadn't got there yet. We will see, won't we? So um, I was talking to one of my church member teachers last night at a meeting, and he's a teacher teaching the same curriculum, and... Um, he was talking about how he, he kind of realized that um, wisdom is based on your proximity to the Lord. If you are close to the Lord and you're being obedient to the Lord, then you're in a place where wisdom can freely pass through you and God can use you to be a person of wisdom. And it's obvious that that happens. If you're not close to the Lord, which we know Solomon obviously wasn't towards the end of his life, less or so. And so I, I thought that was a really good point. Thank you, Bob Elsey, for having that talk last night and giving me some thoughts that you had that you'd kind of contemplated this lesson this week. I think that's true. I really do. Um it explains a lot about a person like Solomon who sometimes had great wisdom and other times not really. And it's because he was not walking with the Lord. That's true. So I divided it up. Um, there's a lot of list in this lesson uh, today. Um, verses 1 through 5. If you will do these things, uh, there's some things you got to do. I mean... God's just not going to dump wisdom on you. You've got to do some things too. So there's a list of, I think, about seven things there. Then verses 6 through 8, if you'll do these things, then the Lord will do these things. And uh, then, uh, 9 through 15, then you will be blessed in these ways. So um, lots of lists in the lesson today. 
So let's let's take a look at it, verses 1 through 5. If you'll do these things, my son, there you go. If you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. Indeed, if, if you will call out for insight and cry out loud for understanding, and if you will look for it, uh, look for it as for silver and search for it as a treasure, hidden treasure, treasure. So he lists seven different things here that um, you need to do. Now, seven's quite a lot of things. Uh, I tend to be simple-minded, and one or two or three is a pretty big deal. But he lists seven here. First one is, if you will accept my words. <laughs> Sons don't tend to do that sometimes. We think we're so smart, and we don't listen to our parents, do we? Uh, if you will store up my commands within you, uh, if you will not let it go in one ear and out the other, uh, but store them up, keep them. Don't let them leave you. That's number two. Number three, turn your ear to wisdom. Don't turn away from wisdom. Turn towards wisdom. Hear it. Understand it when you see it. And apply your heart to understanding. Uh, don't just think about it. Apply it. Find ways to use it. Uh, so that was number four. Number five, if you call out for insight, uh, you ask God to give you insight, and you want insight. And that's a tough thing sometimes to know what to do. Sometimes when circumstances and you don't have enough information, and so he says, cry out for insight. That's number five. Number six, cry loud for understanding. Almost the same type of thing. But know that you don't understand everything and you want to. And so you, you go looking for it. That's number six. And if you look for it, uh, for like silver and search for it as a hidden treasure. Uh, really be looking for wisdom. Don't just go through your life and if you learn something great, uh, if you gain a little bit of wisdom, okay. No, go look for it. So the father to his son lists seven things that the son should do, okay? And then the second list is then the Lord will do these things, okay? Um, if you do those seven things, man, that's a lot. Seven's a lot. Uh, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. You will understand it. You'll come to, to, to understand what that looks like. That's number one. The second, you will find knowledge of God. It's not just knowledge of worldly things. It's knowledge of God. Third thing is for the Lord gives wisdom. Um, let me read the whole thing. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright and he is a shield for those whose walk is blameless. For he guards the house course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. So let me go back through these things that uh, the Lord will do. And I think there's eight of them. Wow. Eight. Here we go. Then he, he will give you, uh, you will understand the fear of the Lord. That's one. Two, you will find the knowledge of God. Three, the Lord will give you wisdom. Fourth, his, from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He'll give you that. Uh, and five is he holds success in store for the upright. He's going to give you success. Now, what does that look like? Um, six, he is a shield to those whose walk is blameless. He's a shield. He stands in front of you and protects you. Seven, he guards the course of the just. Uh, the path that you own, he guards it. And then eight, he protects the way of his faithful ones. So we've seen seven things that we should do. 
eight things that God will do. And now he talks about the results. Then you'll be blessed in these ways. Verse 9, then you will understand what is right and just and fair. Uh, every good path. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. Wisdom will save you from the ways of the wicked men, from men whose words are perverse. Verse 13, who have left the straight path to walk in dark ways, who delight in doing wrong and rejoice in the per perverseness of evil, whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. So you do these seven things, God will do these eight things, and then here are six results, okay? You will understand what is right and fair. You'll gain understanding. It will make sense to you. Second thing is wisdom will enter your heart. Amen for that. We need wisdom, don't we? Third thing is knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. You'll get it, and it'll be pleasant. You'll understand. Fourth thing is discretion will protect you. And discretion, isn't that an interesting word here? Discretion means uh, saying some things and not saying others. So you'll have discretion. Uh, five, uh, understanding will guard you. You will, because of your understanding, they'll, it will protect you, okay? Uh, will guard you. Uh, and the last thing is wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men. And that you'll see them for who they are and not hang out with them. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll hang with a whole different group. Praise the Lord for that. Those are great results, aren't they? Well, this is wisdom, words from a father to a son. Uh, how many of us as sons listen to our fathers? Probably not many of us. I think the older we get, the more wisdom our children seem to believe we have. Isn't that the way that works? All right, here's three truths. First one is the Lord's blessings aren't automatic. We have to be obedient. Uh, we have to position ourselves to receive it. I think that people think they can just sit and soak and God's just going to give them everything they need. No, there are things that you have to do. You have to position yourself for it. So it's not automatic. Second truth is the Lord's blessings aren't linear. Uh, our life is up and down and around and all over the place. Ultimately, all things work together for good for those who trust in the Lord. Ultimately. But it doesn't mean that it's going to be just peachy every day. Last truth is obedience and disobedience have their own rewards. So you want to be blessed? Be obedient. Listen to the, to the Lord and he will give you what you need. Well, let me pray with you. Jesus, we love you. We love each other. Help us to be people of wisdom. Help us to position ourselves in a good place to receive your instructions, Lord. And give us the strength to be obedient so that we'll be blessed. We love you. We trust you. In your name I pray. Amen. God bless you. You have a great week.